So, hey Tomonachi, welcome back to the Fight Talks. Today we're going to talk a little bit about me and Cena working out and getting him ready for his fight on 2022 September 11. Yes, what an amazing, a crazy day to actually be going back into the ring. I'm looking at the footage here with you guys as you can see, so we're doing some pad works. This is actually a couple of days ago and um, yeah, it's just some simple drills. I think like the most important thing for martial arts training, especially when you're preparing for a fight to not make it too complicated. Um, I also always feel that drills on a pad work is something that you want to just make sure that you're constantly going over the small details of the feeling of the fight and the feeling of the punch. You want to try and get your punches as cleaned up as possible as you can. Um, and even at his level, and he's like a K1 champion, right? Uh, there's still work to do, you know? I uh, like to look for a good uh, ratio of how many clean hits are you actually getting? Um, and um, how are you moving? How are you reacting to when I'm moving? So the way I hold the pads, which is quite different from a lot of other guys, is I actually interact. You see, we're trying to like work on scenarios. You know, come in. And although you're not allowed to clinch in K1, he's actually not grabbing me. So somehow it's kind of okay. Plus, it actually also tires him out. Um, the hard thing about holding pads for the heavyweights is that they hit hard and they're heavy. <laughs> and that makes you uh, really work hard for it. Um, it's kind of cool to be back like this and working with a champion. So in 2001, when I won the Japanese Grand Prix champion, and in 2020, he was the champion. So it's like 20 years apart. Wow. I mean, if I have to say it myself, we kind of look like we're the same age. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, that was just a joke. But anyway, um, no, the pad work, uh, like I was trying to explain here, is um, really more about focusing on getting him to hit clean hits and then getting to stay sharp. Um, close to the fight, this is about four days, four or five days out of the fight uh, on this session here. Uh, I feel it's important that you get him to feel confident for one thing, so that it feels like when he's punching and kicking that he's actually taking control of the fight and taking control of it and that he feels, you know, not oh, too tired but still tired enough that his heart rate's up and he's pumping, you know, but he's not being overworked. Um, so I take, uh, so I like to keep it super simple. Um, and I'm not afraid to uh, to take a break and explain things and like if he messes up, I say, okay, no, I'll come back, do it again, do it again, this and that. Um, different things is like, you know, you want to work on um, combinations, uh, super simple combinations, like the combinations that actually work um, in a situation that you're fighting on and how they lead up into, um, for me preferably, I'm a big low kicker, so I'd like to like somehow have the um, advantage of being able to always somehow connect to that low kick. Bam! I wanted that last shot there. Didn't really come. Look at me. I'm more tired than he is. Alright, so this is the same day. So we had a theme of doing five rounds. Since he's only fighting three rounds, potentially four rounds if it's an extension, which I hardly doubt it will be. Uh, he's up against a big, uh, large Japanese uh, guy who's about 110, 15 kilos, maybe a little bit more actually. Uh, about my height, so about 180 and something like that, um, who's a Muay Thai background guy. So our plan, <laughs> I'm just going to spill the beans right here. We sat down and we discussed it and we say, okay, we're going to work in the first round to get at least 10. And that's a number. That's a specific number that we're going for. At least 10 beautiful, hard, strong low kicks connecting to this Muay Thai guy. Uh, classical Muay Thai style, you know, so he's a little bit light on his front foot, which is cool. You can maybe double kick it, or you don't have to double kick it, but you just gotta time it right, like hide it in a combination, or do that jab or hook or something like that to get the low kick snuck in there. Um, and then get those 10 hard low kicks done, and then go for the boxing. So, if you get a chance to see the fight at one point, uh, after I've uploaded this, you should be able to find it on YouTube uh, somewhere. Then, um, you'll probably hear, if they pick it up on the cameras and everything, me calling out the numbers of his low kicks that he's doing. So when we get to eight or 10, if I feel at eight, he's okay to start boxing, we're gonna try and go for a hard boxing still. Um, and I just don't think uh, he will last the boxing, to be honest. So, um, this was actually this morning. Uh, this was uh, to make sure that Cena got a chance to feel the weight of the heavyweights. Um, in this specific fight, what he'd done uh, differently from all the other fights that he's been into is that he actually went to Mike's gym in Holland and spent a good uh, almost five weeks, I think, over there training. 
So he got to train with the uh, legends like Brook and Saki and uh, some of the other champions that are all in glory and stuff like that. And it was really awesome. He came back like a changed man. Uh, and, I, and I swear, I, I wish he had gone earlier. Um, simply because there are just not enough heavyweights to train with in Japan. And you can see, I can still kind of move here, right? I got some moves there, this guy, yeah. Uh, but clearly I'm not gonna wear a mouthpiece and go in and properly spar him. This is just, you know, combinations work and for him to feel how it is to be up against the heavyweight, like in real simulated fighting style, you know. Uh, in this point he's wearing 16 ounce gloves and I'm wearing 12 ounce gloves. Uh, 12 ounce gloves, we fight for as heavyweights with 10 ounces by the way. Uh, the 12 ounce gloves is what I use for pad work and, and bag work and stuff like that if I would be doing that. Um, but in this case it's fine for me because says we're just doing combinations. If we would be sparring, um, I wouldn't accept anything less than 16 ounces because it just hurts too much. Uh, even here today, uh, during the session here we were doing, uh, there was a few times where I was like, oh man, <laughs> I'm glad I'm not fighting anymore. That being said though, I gotta say, it was exciting to be back in training with him like that. You're probably going to expect a couple of photo bombs from the wife. She's running back and forth and doing her Tabata bicycle. Uh, it's gonna be in a little bit, in a couple of minutes, I think. Um, but anyway, yeah. I thought this would be a cool way to kind of reconnect and get back into the coaching and showing you guys what it is, uh, the grunt hard work that goes behind the scenes that most people never really get to see or appreciate unless they're actually properly doing martial arts. Um, I think that when you have a, a good training partner, you can totally create miracles. Um, you can push each other to the limits and just get better and learn and steal each other's techniques and stuff like that. At this point, I feel like I have more to give uh, Sheena than he has to me, which is fine. Um, but to be too, totally honest about this, um, it's hard to assess if you're not actually really, really sparring someone. Because combinations, anyone can be a gym champion with combinations. It's really just about... <clears throat> I wouldn't call <clears throat> I wouldn't call it dance moves or anything, but in combination of like like moving in certain patterns and stuff like that, um, you learn to get really good at it when you do it a lot. Um, and some people are great at combinations when they work with a partner like that, but when you put it into sparring, it all goes out of the window. Um, so what are we actually doing? What are we trying to accomplish here, right? Uh, uh, yeah, that was good, kick. <laughs> what we're really trying to accomplish here with doing these kind of drills is that. Um, by uh, countless repetitions, you get to uh, do these uh, millions of calculations. Oh yeah, I'm already burned out by the way. Uh, this is not my jam at this point. I'm not training, uh, like fit fight training anyway. But you get all these millions of calculations, of micro calculations going on in distance and timing and hands and feet and everything going on at the same time. And it's like a, it's like one of those, you know, uh, games where you have to bash the, uh, the things that come out. I don't know what the name of that game is called. Uh, but it, to hit the right target at the right spot at the right timing where it hurts the most uh, is really like a extremely beautiful and also extremely hard thing to do. Um, so by doing these drills over and over and over again, oh, there comes the wife. <laughs> Uh, over and over and over again, these micro million calculation that goes on inside your brain, they build these neurological pathways that makes it easier for you to recognize that moment, that split moment, when you're actually able to connect with someone uh, in a real fight. Um, so that's why these kind of combinations and pad works uh, need to be done over and over and over again. Um, today, in this session, as you can see, we're keeping it super simple. Remember the strategy that I just told you about, um, about hitting him with 10, like 10 really hard, good low kicks um, is, the, um, is the main objective here before he starts boxing. Some of the boxing things that I want him to do is like the uppercut and the short stuff and the straight long right, uh, right down the middle. Um, I think this guy, the way his guard is, because he's a large gentleman, he's not really compact enough to like really get in there and um, like block the punches that come straight down the middle. And you know, he's got such a large gentleman feature, so <laughs> I feel like he's an easy target to hit. But I just wanna make sure that when Sheena does hit and connect with something, that he hits really, really hard. Um, and that's all I want him to do. So it's gonna be exciting to see uh, how the fight goes. Uh, I feel like uh, him going over and training with Gokan Saki and staying in Mike's gym for uh, you know the four or five weeks that he was there, really um, not just change his mindset, but also uh, being able to spar with the, you know, some of the top uh, kickboxers in the world, the heavyweights is gonna make a huge impact on this fight this time. So I'm excited to get to the fight, yeah. It's just in a couple of days now. Uh, I'm not quite sure when this video will be uploaded, uh, but 
sorry. Um, but I'm, we'll be sure that um, I'm just talking about it in real time. So if it goes up next week, then don't worry about it. Then at this time, you can go on YouTube after you watch this and actually probably see his fight um, on the K1 uh, channel that they had, the official K1 channel. All right, so what we did here was we had a clock running. You, know, you can't see the clock from here, but it was a one minute clock going. Um, so I could kind of suss how long we're going for. The idea is because the fight is just two days away, you don't want to get him too tired. We still, once again, like the pad work we're doing, want to get him to feel confident, right? Now, I firmly believe, as you can see here, like a, a fantastic jab is uh, essential for fighting. Um, so stick it back and forth and then play around with like, you know, slipping, ducking, parring, uh, whatever it is that you do. But have a good strong jab because the jab can be a uh, fun, fun and games there. Uh, because the jab could really be like the leader of how you control uh, the distance between where you are uh, compared to where the distance is um, to where your foot is going to land on his leg. <laughs> yeah, it's all about getting your foot to his leg. Nice, there it comes. See, now this te specific technique here is a counter low kick that I'm trying to show him um, uh, that I totally stole from Arnest the Hoos. Uh, every time I would jab him, he would just tap me on the front leg. And it's not even hard, but it's so annoying. It's like every time you, you, you think you're in control by jabbing him, then you get tapped with a low kick and you're like, shit. And then that starts messing up with your head, right? So you start thinking, okay, am I doing something wrong here? What's going on? Um, well, you know, how do I cope with this, uh, this thing? Because every time I get in, I get punished, right? Um, which is uh, Ernesto's well, strongest strategy for, for the way he fought, uh, really was to mess up with um, the timing of his opponent. Um, and I really feel that that like little short like tap on the front leg when you're when you're jabbing when you think you're in control and jabbing it's so annoying and it really messes with your head. And once you start thinking or overthinking things, I guess I, you would say it, that is that once you start overthinking things, then suddenly everything becomes like questionable. You start questioning everything you're doing. It's like, am I really doing the right thing in here? I remember the last time I sparred with Onesto, it was five rounds straight of three minutes, like a full on like title match. And it was like the most mind blowing sparring session I've ever had in my life. Um, he also still remembers it. Cause I kicked him in the head a couple of times and he didn't like it. <laughs> But man, um, yeah, you could really learn a lot from someone um, that is better than yourself. Again, here, just sticking to the basics, you know, trying to find that distance uh, for where the low kick comes in, get the combinations going and flowing. Oh, he doesn't like my low kick, trust me. I still kick hard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to not to hurt him here, but he's like laughing at it. I was, he wasn't really hurt, that was just a joke. Uh, but yeah. There's something exciting about working with a champion, I'll tell you guys that. There's also something exciting about working with someone who's bigger than yourself. Uh, pretty much my whole professional fighting career was fighting people that were larger than me. And so I always felt like I was coming in as the underdog. Um, but I, as you can see, kind of feel comfortable enough to be able to do that. Um, we're training with shoes on for two reasons. Uh, one is to protect our feet so that it's close to the fight so we put the shin pads on for sure. And by wearing shoes, you're not kicking too hard. Uh, you can kick hard, but you're not actually getting a risk of injury. So I suggest sometimes if you're training for a fight or even if you're not training for a fight, actually get a pair of, uh, what do they call them? Um, wrestling shoes, because they're thinner, not like these running shoes and they sit and, and, and tie around your feet way better. Um, so it's actually really comfortable to train with them. Also, depending on what kind of flooring you're on, it could be so much better to be in shoes, especially that floor, because that floor is a rubber floor uh, meant for CrossFit and barbells and stuff like that. And it's actually, it, it will tear your feet apart if you like train bare feet on that stuff. Uh, but yeah, if you didn't notice it, this is CrossFit Nishi Azabu, uh, our gym down in uh, Nishi Azabu in Tokyo. Um, yeah, and we just put in the rig in the background there, you can see, where you can do pull-ups and stuff like that. And it's kind of cool. It really kind of opened up for the gym and uh, created more uh, workout opportunities. Uh, we've been in the business for almost 10 years, so it's kind of cool. Okay, this is going to be the last round that I'm going to run with him here. And um, yeah, tag along for the last stuff here. We're trying to think of uh, how it would feel like to be kicked by the middle kick, right? So we're going back and forth with middle kick a couple times. And then I think we're transitioning into just lightly working on the counter cross. Uh, from the middle kick. So if this Muay Thai based fighter comes in and does a classical, uh, you know, left leg Muay Thai kick uh, on the arms as we're doing here, then it could be cool to like follow up with a straight right hand on top of that. Um, so we're just warming up here, not warming up, but we're just doing some kicks here to get a feeling for how it feels and then see how the timing is and distance is. Boom, there's the right hand. He already knew that coming. That was great. And then we're going to play a little bit sooner. I think it is. Just let it wait, wait for it, wait for it. 
boom, and then I said punch it here. Here it comes. Uh, unfortunately, this part of the video, uh, I'm going to overlap that with some music so you can't hear the, the kicks and punches um, from the video because there's music in the background. And uh, as you know, YouTube is uh, super strict on uh, copyright claim music and stuff like that. And they will literally just um, <laughs> di discard your video from this. Anyway, so this is what it looks like, guys, when you are training a champion um, right before a fight. Uh, I'm gonna try and come back with more uh, fight talks like this. I hope you enjoy what you see, and if you see what you like, go ahead and subscribe to that channel. Tomodachi, we'll be back. This was Fight Talks.